All right. Joining us now, Kelly Bennett, multimedia journalist, Super Talk Mississippi News. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, thanks. You know, I hear that news sounder, and <laughs> I almost just naturally started going, uh, for Super Talk Mississippi News, this is Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got you. All right. What what do you want to talk about today? What have you been tracking this week in the great state of Mississippi? Well, uh, you know, I thought since the Mardi Gras kind of came to an end and, and we got into a more somber part of the week, although there's still king cake in the office. Yeah. So figure that out. <laughs> uh, I Yeah, my jeans are a lot tighter now than they were at the beginning <laughs> of the Mardi Gras season. <laughs> but I wrote down some of the happier stuff from this week. So, yeah. One story in particular I'm loving is the success of these blackout tags yeah. that you're seeing all over the place. They've only been on sale since July, and the money raised from these plates, some of it goes to this trust fund for death benefits for first responders. Yep. And in just a few months, over a million dollars has already been put into that trust fund, uh, 36,000 tags. That's fantastic. And I think uh, Senator Delano, who's the one that introduced the bill in the Senate, is going to see about uh, some additional options in the future. There's legislation on that right now. Um, so I think that's, that's a pretty cool story. I, I love to see the good guys get some help. Um, another neat story we had this week, I don't know if you heard this, but there is a teacher at Oak Grove Middle School in Hattiesburg, Haley Ladner, mm-hmm. who gave birth to quintuplets. I saw this that. Week. I saw Four that. Girls and a boy, yeah. Uh, she says she's sharing her story. She wants other couples who've dealt with infertility issues to know that there's hope out there. Obviously, this couple had a little help. They've got a lot of kids to take care yeah. of now. Um, <laughs> and, and they were expecting maybe twins. They were really surprised when they found out it was going to be quintuplets. So congratulations to them. That's what I uh, call instant family. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, I would be like, okay, now we're we're done, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I that assume awesome. everybody's good. Mother, children, babies, yes. all good. Everybody seems to be doing fine. And awesome. Very, very, very excited. Of course, you know, talk to him in a week, Gerard, right? Yeah, and <laughs> yeah everybody absolutely. Everybody else is being exhausted. Uh, another cool thing that's happening, uh, we may have an official state gemstone. Yeah, yeah. It's, Tell us about it's that. The, it's the Mississippi opal, and apparently it is the only gem that's naturally produced within the state's geographical boundaries. It was first discovered in 2004 in Claiborne County. I didn't realize it was such a recent discovery. But, you know, I've got kind of a personal story here. Um, So I bought a new house a couple of years ago, and I started doing some stuff in the backyard, and I wanted rocks for landscaping. So for the first time in my life, uh, I actually have, like, I went to a rock yard, you know. So I have, like, a rock guy. (laughs) And He's pointing to all these rocks that they have for sale at his business, and he's telling me, you know, these come from Missouri, these are from Colorado. And I said, doesn't Mississippi have rocks? And he said, not really. (laughs) 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 You you just don't think about that fact that, you know, we have trees, we've got plenty of those, we've got plenty of farmland, um, but I guess we're, we're not so abundant in the rock area. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Um, all right, so any bills in particular you uh, kept an eye on this week? It looks like we've been talking about it here this morning that elimination of the income tax, don't have a lot of hope for that. Yeah, I was kind of bummed out by that. I was hoping that maybe they would speed up the elimination of the income tax. Uh But I have a feeling – I don't know what your thoughts are on this, Gerard, but I have a feeling that – It's an election year. They knew how hot this debate got last year. Remember, there was a lot of debate. There was. uh, On this last year. And I think maybe our state legislators didn't want to burn up the time this time. Or maybe they want to see, Hmm. you know, that could be some of the logic. It could also be that they want to see. Because, I mean, last year they already gave us 
a historical tax cut. Mm -hmm. It's coming into play. It's being phased in. So I think some of them want to see how that works out now that we don't have this federal influx of money coming in anymore. You keep calling it helicopter money. I like that name for it. That's a pretty decent name for it. So um, I think, you know, obviously as a taxpayer, we would all, I think every taxpayer would love to have more money in their pocket, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't look like it's going to happen this time. But it's not, it's not horrible news because the tax cuts they passed last year are already being phased in. Yeah, I just think there were there were a lot of folks, including me, that had very high hopes of joining the ranks of the other states, I think six, seven, that uh, do not presently tax income. And we yeah. really saw, even though Mississippi still has an income tax, we have, the, I believe, the fifth lowest uh, overall, which is certainly good. But I, I just believe the stars are aligned, and this was the time to, to get it done doesn't look like uh, that's going to become a reality. There's still some question in my mind, however, Kelly, that the governor may decide to call a uh, special session to address this issue. Right. Well, I guess anything is possible. And wasn't that one of the big items on his agenda at the beginning of the session? Top priority. Yeah, I thought it was. Speaker, the speaker as well. Yeah. So, you know, he does. Oh, now yeah, you're talking about House Speaker Philip Gunn. Right. Um, some big news on him this week. He's talking about postpartum benefits. He's been pretty clear the entire time, even though they passed in the Senate and, you know, last legislative session, the postpartum bill to extend postpartum benefits to Medicaid recipients from two months to a year. Uh, passed in the Senate and failed in the House, and it looks like that's going to happen again yeah, this year. I think that's right. I do. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that they're going to. Oh, another one I got excited about, because uh, I do like my beer, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> Representative Brent, Brent Powell. He's authored a bill that would allow alcohol sales on Sundays between 1 and 6. What counties would be able to decide whether or not to authorize this? Uh, he he was talking um, to Lucian Smith, who was filling in for Paul Gallo this morning on Super Talk. Yeah, and he said, he said, I don't know why I get pushback on this. I'm really just trying to bring Mississippi into the 21st century. Did you know that Mississippi is still a prohibition state that's never been taken off the book? Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of talk about that. Now, Powell said he would also like to see the state get out of the the business of alcohol sales altogether. Sure. You know, there's been a lot of talk about how dilapidated and slow things are at the ABC warehouse, which is a state-run facility. Um, what else is going on? Uh, ballot initiatives, um, I think that's still alive. Right. It. Uh... Let's see. I believe it passed the Senate. Is yeah. that, isn't that right, Rhino? It's over in the in the House. It it, it um, essentially just has a very high signature threshold, virtually two and a half or two point five, um, what uh, the present level is. So yeah, and and that has been the sticking point. That's why it didn't pass last year. Yeah, they couldn't agree on the amount of signatures. Um, the House and Senate couldn't mm-hmm. agree. So they're taking it up again this year. We'll see what happens there. Um, what else is going on? There, uh, There's a bill out there to try to clean up the election rolls. This is something that the voter rolls. Yeah. Um, this is something Secretary of State Michael Watson has brought up pretty frequently that, you know, basically it uh, sounds like a few counties in Mississippi could use a good purge. Um, yeah, the, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, so they're talking about, you know, if you don't vote for a couple of election cycles, right. then your your circuit clerk will send you a notice. And I think they gave you, like, they gave you a pretty good amount of time to respond. Yeah, to and, and it still didn't mean you couldn't vote. You could still show up, vote, file an affidavit, and take care of it later. He just can't get it uh, any traction in the legislature on that. We got to go, though, Kelly. I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, it's been a great Mardi Gras week. Now we're in the midst of yeah. Lent. 
<laughs> as you know. Yes. So we got to take it easy. Talk to you next yep. week. See you. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. Thanks. Coming right back in the Element Well Studio.